we're talking about the frequency and the beat is part of it. The beat and it ends up with the drum, the beat tells the DNA how hard it's driven into the, to the body. Just before the baby is born, when the mother is pregnant, the baby is producing 46 base pairs per turn in its DNA. That means the skin of that baby will be perfect, be flawless, the eyes are clear, everything is perfect in that child. As soon as the body can no longer produce 46 base pairs per turn, the pineal gland responds and sends a pulse or an energy down into the mother and tells her to give birth to the child. The child is immediately born. The placentia in a woman is what it, it uh, isolates the fetus from the negativity that the mother has got in her body from her environment, because it's pretty negative out here regardless of what you try to do. It's not that good anymore. And so this is isolating or insulating the child. But as soon as the child is born and the umbilical cord is cut, the baby now no longer has 46 base pairs per turn in its DNA, but in one second or less, has now reduced to 34 base pairs per turn. So that means if we have 46 base pairs per turn, equaling 100% of longevity in our DNA cycle, and you take your first breath here on Earth and produce the 34, the baby has lost 25% of its lifetime, its life expectancy at birth. Okay, that's how quick you start aging. When you are 18 years old, your body now only has 18 base pairs per turn, and you are 50% expired DNA-wise on your 18th birthday. And science has totally backed that up, and that's why in the health field you see hormones coming out like DHEA and other types of things that people are putting out on the market because the body stops producing you at 18 years old. About 50% of your body functions start to shut down on your 18th birthday. And so that's created a tremendous stir. For example, DHEA, dehydroepiestrone, is one of the first hormones that's noticed because people now can't eat junk food all day long and stay thin. They start getting fat and stupid and sloppy and they can't function anymore. This is just the first thing that science knows. They, you know, in scripts, a lot of these different uh, labs did tests. They found that if you put DHE back in the body, then the body would start you know, reversing some of the aging process. And this was a big attack on the body and still is today. You know, there's a new product out which is called growth hormone factor and there's really things coming on the market that work on a biochemical level, but we've got to get back up and let's go precursing levels to make the biochemistry behave better. When you reach 55 years old, if you haven't done something to your body by that time, you have six base pairs per turn. So you're 95% gone. So when you're my age, unless you do something, you're 95% in the grave, genetically speaking. So you begin to see what a stupid existence that we have on this planet because we have put ourselves in regression for years and years and years. If we were to go back to the civilization of Atlantis 12,000 years ago and look what went on there before we had these scalar wave warfare and all the other things that science is starting to uncover now in, in, in these forms of older weapons, and what it did to the Earth's auric field, the aura around the Earth, you look at days, people that have names like Methuselah that lived 6,700 years. So genetically, 12,000 years ago, we had this condition where we did live a lot longer. Because what we have reduced ourselves to now is basically 10 decades of experience. We, 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 we set ourselves up and we become 10 different people over 10 years if we can make it to 100. The first 10 years, we look at, we, we start to realize body functions, communication skills, orientation skills. And usually by our, we start into our teens in our second decade, we start from our orientation school, you know, we suddenly realize that our parents out here are totally living in contradiction to what we believe internally because we still have that first decade of truth that, you know, instilled in us and our DNA hasn't been disrupted too much. So we go into our second 10 years of teens we start rejecting and fighting or committing suicide or killing others right away now because we're, our spirits are so alive when we're born. Then we get into our third decade, from 20 to 30, we start thinking about our career skills a little bit, our further orientation, and maybe a look at something about life if we haven't blown ourselves into oblivion in our first de decade. And each decade progresses until we get up to the fourth or fifth decade, we start to really take count of our spiritual purpose, our stock, and what we're really going to do, and we start putting things away for when we leave this world and go into the next one. 
So that's how life works. And in 10, 100 years, that's not very much, not very many choices. So it has to repeat itself many times until we start making choices for ourselves. This gives you a little bit of an idea, spiritually wise, how DNA works. And physically, what goes on. There's a thousand different nutrients I could name that do a thousand different things in consciousness. And you'd have a thousand questions, which I don't mind. Consciousness, the soul, to anchor itself in a physical environment to get a reality check with other beings subjected to the same experience. The hydrogen atom itself brings the consciousness in. It doesn't come from oxygen, it comes from consciousness. It comes from the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom has been shown to make nuclear bombs, as well as many different things in our lives. It mix it with oxygen and you have water. And the hydrogen atom has seven different colors going around it. It's like a proton and an electron. And this electron goes around the proton very fast. Consciousness determines that orbit, and that is transmitted to other atoms to cause them to orbit in a like manner. The seven levels of consciousness, the physical plane, the astral plane, the mental plane, all these different planes of consciousness, where your mind comes from, where your heart feels, all of these things are represented by colors and corresponding sounds. And these are fed into the hydrogen. Pythagoras called this phenomenon, for example, hundreds of years ago, music of the spheres and created a Pythagorean rhythm and a diatonic scale from it. It was all based on consciousness. All man's inventions and creations only come from within. The outside didn't create us, we created the outside. When you start looking at it that way, you begin to understand it. The nitrogen atom is a bonding atom. Nitrogen in the body creates protein, and the outside world can create explosives. So it works, it's a double-edged sword in itself. All these atoms are. It, and, and we are tremendously powerful when we take all this potential and apply it in a proper manner to consciousness. In the daytime, in the morning, when the sun comes up, the energy that feeds the hydrogen atom starts coming in what's called the red area. The red area feeds the pineal pituitary gland, and when these pituitary hormones go into the bloodstream from sleep to waking up, because the sun is coming up, it causes us to wake up from a dream state, which would be the astral state. So we wake up. Like, why do you wake up when the sun comes up? Or why do you wake up at a certain time? Because something tells you to, and consciousness is what tells you to do that. Yeah, you could say, well, your body is detox and all the things that go on on a biochemical level, but that's not the leading factor, that's the following factor. So in the morning, when the red, the willpower strikes your body and causes you to rise and get up and perform, then you start your day off. During that time, you look at the rainbow starting with red out to violet. The violet is out at the outer edge of the electron level, whereas the red is at the proton level. The proton of the atom is 1,645 times more dense than the electron. So the energy that's feeding the nucleus of that atom is what's going to feed your consciousness in a greater manner. And as the day, as the sun goes across the sky during the day, the polarity switches, so it's sunset. The violet, which is at the outer edge of the atom in the morning, the violet is now down on the nucleus, and the willpower, the red, is clear out on the edge. You have actually changed space 180 degrees, and you have changed consciousness in one span of one day. Your body gets used to this. That's why you think different in the morning than you do at midnight. You're an entirely different being, and you've got to get in synchronicity with that. Now, if you take a person and put them in a jet plane and take them from here to England, then they're not oriented anymore to that cycle of the sun coming up to the sun setting. And so what happens is now you have a lagging period of your consciousness where you just don't feel like you're there sometimes. You're in and out of consciousness, which is true, and they call this jet lag. When I worked at NASA, we had a big problem with this with the astronauts because they weren't even subjected to any sunset to sunrise. They were just going around and around the Earth in the early days that I worked on the Mercury and Gemini project for the Apollo. By the time we got to Apollo, we already had that mastered. But still, it was very interesting. So you begin to see from space medicine down to terrestrial medicine, all of these things have a change in our body. But what happens is, in the electrical precursing level, one of the first things that starts to happen when the body fails is your cellular structure of your body fails at one color level. One color starts to fail with aging, the DNA. If green fails, for example, green would be a sign of the throat area, the thyroid gland is going to cause the problem. 
Okay? If yellow fails, we're going to start having a digestive problem. So that means that the hydrogen atom on a cellular level, the cells cannot uptake the light properly anymore on certain casings of the DNA. 